Yo, what's good, guys? Welcome back to Bucketology. We did the Eastern Conference All-Star Reserves yesterday. Today, it's time for the West, and you know what that means. The Western Conference, we got the starting five right here. We got seven reserves coming in hot. Two backcourt, three frontcourt, and then two wild cards. Let's start with the backcourt. First pick, easy for me. No question about it. First time All-Star. What a season it has been for Shea Gilgis Alexander. Oklahoma City Thunder getting an all-star which is absolutely insane to me considering the way I felt about this team going into the year it looked like just another throwaway season especially when your second overall pick Chet Holmgren breaks his foot or whatever happened couldn't guard LeBron in transition of a rec game damn SGA has been even better than advertised I mean he was been great he gets better every year and especially for a lead guard, a guy that's not a high volume three point scorer, simply being elite in pretty much every aspect of basketball, buying in on the defensive end, which there's so many star guards in this league that just don't do that. But as a help defensive player, as a switch defensive player, he's super capable getting his hand in the passing lanes, generating steals, blocks, his activity level. It's incredibly noteworthy compared to a lot of his counterparts. Versatility, being able to play multiple positions, being able to play off ball more, fitting in with a guy like Josh Giddy. There were some questions about there. And of course, averaging north of 30 points per game on a team where he is the front page of the scouting report. Every time you play the OKC Thunder, you got to contain SGA. You got to stop SGA. Hasn't stopped this team from wildly exceeding expectations. Now, second spot in the backcourt, even though the Grizzlies, they've been struggling lately, they ran into an unforeseen obstacle that they still have not recovered from. They did actually just win their first game since this incident. John Morant, for the level of play on the court, a lot of people I feel like take it for granted at this point, but obviously the human highlight machine. Production, exactly what you'd expect, and the team is still elite. It was obvious he was going to make the game. Now for the front court, my first pick in the front court has got to be a guy I would have started over Zion Williamson, who just has not played enough games to justify a starting position, even though he's good enough. But DeMontis Sabonis, obviously not the fan favorite guy that Zion is, so it makes sense he wouldn't be the starter in this case. But the season he has had, absolutely remarkable. How about reviving the Sacramento Kings, bringing relevance to a franchise that, let's face it, has been a laughing stock for 15 years, maybe more? It's been a while since the Kings were this good, and he's not the only reason why, but Demonis Sabonis has been the best player on this team. Very Joker-esque, playing the center position, really for the first time, full-time starter, and he's just a perfect fit with all these shooters around him, fast-paced offense with just a lot of ball movement, player movement, and is not just a total target traffic cone on the defensive end of the floor. I feel like he has like slimmed down a little bit, he's just become a little more mobile. Next spot we got another first-time All-Star. This guy, I think he should win most improved player. A lot of people saying SGA. SGA has been a star in this league before this year. It's maybe not literally an all-star. I mean, the West has been loaded with guards for years. But Lowry Markkinen is having one of the most unforeseen breakout seasons that I can remember. As a Bulls fan, I'm honestly not as salty as I could be. The Bulls fumbling with development of young players, it's literally nothing new. And I can't be that mad, as the Cavaliers had him as like a throw-in for the Donovan Mitchell trade. It's not like he broke out as soon as he left the Chicago Bulls. It was the year later, arriving in Utah, playing in the Eurobasket tournament. But out of nowhere, this guy has become a star. It seems like overnight, bulked up. Dude is absolutely massive. He's playing multiple positions. He's just producing whatever he's asked to do. Obviously, he can put the ball in the bucket, He's a team player, the ball doesn't stick in his hands, just a sharpshooter of course, defensively, he's as bought in, he's as athletic and physical on both ends, catching bodies, never seen this many dunks from Larry Markkinen, in a Bulls jersey, he would try it sometimes, and he would miss like half the time, I mean he was missing more dunks from the Bulls than anybody, and my last pick, in the front court, listen, AD versus Kawhi is the discussion that I'm having right here for this last pick in the front court, and it's a tough one, because on one hand, Anthony Davis has the better numbers, stats all around, but the Lakers don't deserve two All-Stars. The Lakers aren't even worse without him, which over the course of an entire year, maybe this doesn't end up being the case, but for whatever reason, his presence on the court hasn't necessarily translated to winning, whereas with Kawhi Leonard, it took him a little bit to find his footing. But recently, he's been on an absolute tear and this team is winning games solely because of him. If he wasn't playing in these games, they'd be losing like every night. There are not enough sources of offense on this Clippers team to keep them afloat to win on a nightly basis in the NBA. 
and simply having him on the court, needing him to score 25, 30 points a night is the only reason that they're in fourth in the Western Conference right now. And last but not least, for my wild card spots, I had one easy choice, Damian Lillard, back to prime form, averaging north of 30 points per game, single-handedly keeping this Trailblazers team, I don't even know if I would say afloat, they've been such a disappointment to me, but he's been undeniable and just healthy and available all season long. Don't know where they'd be without him for sure, but definitely just doing typical Dame things, supercharging an offense pretty much by himself on most nights while his teammates are maddeningly inconsistent. And this last choice was very tricky for me because I'm not picking a front court guy. The only reason I even went between Kawhi and Anthony Davis was because the front court does not offer the same amount of talent in the Western Conference as the back court does. It was literally pick one of those two guys or pick Jaron Jackson. I have to decide between Anthony Edwards, De'Aaron Fox, and Devin Booker. And Devin Booker to me is easily the best player out of these three guys. It feels like it's been over 15 games, maybe 20 games since he's played. I don't think it's fair to guys like Anthony Edwards and De'Aaron Fox who have been healthy all year and produced for their teams. Anthony Edwards coming on super strong as of late. He's got the Timberwolves winning, sneakily winning a lot of games recently. De'Aaron Fox has been like the most clutch player in the league though. And if you compare him and Anthony Edwards numbers, they're very, very similar. I know Anthony Edwards probably has the greater workload, especially with Carl Anthony Towns missing so many games, but I'm gonna go with De'Aaron Fox on this one. I just cannot overstate how incredible it is what the Sacramento Kings are doing this year. And two all-stars for the Kings is crazy, but that's what happens when you get your team into the third seed, especially a team that I don't think anybody really had this team making that top eight at the start of the year. Expectations go a long way for me, and De'Aaron Fox has been absolutely massive in terms of making sure they close games, not just staying in games, staying in a lead. But when things get tough down to the wire, this guy is always someone that you can rely on to pull a team out of a close, tight situation. And he has absolutely delivered so far this year. Shout out De'Aaron Fox, Anthony Edwards, I'm sure he'll have plenty of all-star games in the future, and they're probably going to pick him anyway. I mean, he's an all-star type guy, he's definitely good for the entertainment value, so I wouldn't be surprised if they pick him anyway. But shout out Devin Booker too, who's going to be the snub here, just hasn't played enough games. But man, you take a look at what the Phoenix offense has to do just to produce points on a possession-by-possession possession basis right now, even with all the rest of their guys. The massive void that is left in their offense without Devin Booker, it's been a problem for them. I mean, recently they've been picking it up, but it took them a while to really figure out what they were doing. And he was nearly MVP level when he was healthy, so at least shout out to him, but that's going to do it for this video. Let me know what your Western Conference All-Stars would be for the reserves, and that's going to do it. Check out my Eastern Conference video if you haven't. It's been Bucketology. Peace out.